All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast. BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. Let's talk a little about the Trump administration. And to talk to you right now, whoever you are, if you are Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Green, Independent, no matter what, let's look at a few things going on that all Americans can address. This is not a pro-Trump or anti-Trump statement, because he's just, you know, the name on the whole package. But let's look at some things that are going on. What on earth is John Bolton doing in the cabinet? Why is John Bolton there? The warmongering neocon. I mean, what really are neocons? They throw around this label neocon all the time. It kind of just becomes synonymous with John Bolton, now our current national security advisor. And he was the... um, ambassador to the UN during during the George W. Bush administration said that Iraq is a good thing and still stands by the uh, decision to invade Iraq. That ties into a neocon thing where it's like modern day imperialism. The people who believe that the only way to preserve democracy is to go to war. And when I said modern day imperialism, it's just sort of like uh, you also go to war because you believe that your way is good. So the you don't want anyone to challenge the current power structure, so you go to war to put them down before they start, preemptive strikes, all of those things. What on earth is he doing in the cabinet? I mean, like, a lot of people are waking up to the stuff when they're just like, okay, you're saying you want all of those things, but are also you're just going into other countries for natural resources? What on earth is going on in Venezuela? It's like a lot of people are saying that, yes, Nicolas Maduro is a crappy president, all right? I mean... Even the Venezuelans think Maduro is a crappy president, but it's like, is there also something here about getting natural resources, particularly oil? It seems to be sort of a consistency that goes on with John Bolton and his plans for world domination. Mwahaha. But, like, there's something else, though, that we really need to kind of address when you're talking about neocons. I was asking somebody once, do they really believe that stuff? that the only way to preserve democracy is to go to war, or are they just making up a bunch of crap so that they can climb in the power rankings, so they can climb up in Washington? And, you know, that person really didn't have an answer, but I can answer that question myself right now. It's a lot of things. It's never really just one single answer to something like that. I mean, yes, people do want to climb in the power rankings, And yes, though, people do use war as one of the ways to preserve their power. And they do view some of these other governments as genuine threats. You know, it's like a lot of people were hoping that the Trump administration would be something different. But to be honest, I'm not really seeing too many different things because it's still based on the same kind of left and right political thought. It's still based on the same kind of Republican versus Democrat thought. And that's not an anti-Trump statement. No matter who is in the White House, Republican or Democrat, I would be saying something like that. And, I mean, I notice a lot of Americans are frustrated with the two-party system. Or let me rephrase that. A lot of Americans were frustrated with the two-party system around 2015, 2016, like January, February of 2016. And they were saying all these statements about Hillary and Donald Trump. They were like, it's Pepsi versus Coke. And they sort of recognized that. I mean, to give a more honest statement, you had a corrupt business person versus a corrupt career politician. And yes, I mean, I know Donald Trump has a lot of supporters right now. He was a corrupt businessman. Look at his connections to... Russian mobsters bailing him out in the late 90s and stuff like that. Look at his stuff with Felix Sater. I mean, it's like he had corrupt business practices. And if you look at someone like Hillary Clinton, do we need to even explain that she dealt with her own level of political corruption? Look at the Cattlegate scandal way back in the 90s, which involved perhaps, you know, it's like the allegations that Hillary Clinton was caught cheating in the stock market, particularly in cattle futures, or the destabilization of Libya, the destabilization of Syria, her role in the things that led to the refugee crisis that is just running rampant in Europe. So you had a corrupt businessman versus a corrupt career politician. That's the kind of dynamic. And when you even hear those kind of simple, neat little package statements, it's Pepsi versus Coke, 
I mean, a lot of the American people were waking up to that. They're just like, hey, this two-party system sucks. I mean, still, we st it doesn't eliminate the corruption, and it also is not really giving us a representative of the people. And that's one of the reasons why we have the current uh, left-right dynamic. It's, it's something that kind of just – it's divide and conquer. The people who are currently in power can divide the masses, and we can't unify. And that's kind of what they're opposed to, because that would mean that this type of uh, – the current political and power establishment does not benefit from the unity of the American people. I mean, I think a lot of people are aware of that. They just don't put it into words j just the way as we laid it as we laid it out right now. But I said that was in early 2016, right? Right? Prior to the Trump victory. What do we have now? What happened in 2018? Everyone's hyping up the blue wave. Everyone's saying in 2020, I'm going to vote Democratic no matter who's on the ticket. On the one hand, I mean, you did get a lot of people together around a cause... On the other hand, it's just increased partisanship. It's increased polarization. The left versus right dynamic is out of control right now. And one of the things that I thought could possibly happen was something I've been talking about for a long time, a third party alliance. I was just like, I mean, I'll even say it right now. I don't see why they don't have this. Why don't the libertarians and the greens unite? Why don't they pull in other third parties? I mean, first of all, they could unite around their frustration with the two-party system. Second of all, they could unite around representing the interests of the people, eliminating political corruption. We've addressed a few things about how there are also some similarities that they could perhaps do. Perhaps the Libertarians and Greens could uh, come together on the fair tax. That was one thing that I had talked about. But they could find a variety of issues. And if you had sort of a third-party alliance that actually represented the will of the people, maybe you'd have some sort of dynamic going on that would overthrow the current political establishment. Have we always had Republicans and Democrats in this country? No. All kinds of political parties. The Federalists, the Free Soil Party, the Whig Party. And we are long overdue for a political change. Remember even stuff like Teddy Roosevelt and the Bull Moose Party? New parties can come about. And they can overthrow the current political establishment. Because it's like, what we sort of have is, we have kind of a system where no matter who's in the White House, they just have to go through a whole bunch of nasty stuff, political backstabbing, false promises, as well as God knows what. Okay, though. Let's talk about that, though, about the road to the White House for the Trump administration right now. It is currently the end of May 2019. We have just heard the findings of the Mueller report. Does anybody else in the world just think that Robert Mueller is just throwing out ambiguous statements because it's not meant to actually do anything? It's almost like a political circus. I don't know what the motivation for Mueller to do that would be. But it's just like ambiguous statements. Well, it's like, we aren't saying that we exonerate the president, but we're also not saying that he is going to be indicted for anything. We're not saying that he actually did something, but we're not saying that he did not do anything. Ambiguous statements. That's just what I'm hearing. And also, I mean, I understand fully well that in this time, 2019, the Democrats don't have in the, the votes in the Senate for removal from office. I repeat... They do not have the votes in the Senate for removal from, from office. But if they actually have the dirt on Trump to the point where they're saying that they have 10 counts of obstruction of justice committed by Donald Trump and his administration, 10 counts of obstruction of justice, and they're not going to proceed with impeachment, you just start to wonder, well, is there any truth to that? Why on earth wouldn't you at least put the articles of impeachment forward. Granted, though, to be fair, there are people out there who are calling for the president's impeachment. One of them is the Republican congressman, Justin Amash, who is uh, from, oh, what was that, the 3rd District, the 4th District in Michigan? Michigan congressman Justin Amash. The kind of, uh, he is a self-admitted rhino, Republican in name only. He openly says he's a libertarian. And let's not kid ourselves, though. Yes, he's talking about the... Um, 
pushing forward with the articles against Donald Trump. He's saying a lot of anti-Trump things right now. But why? Because there's a chance that Justin Amash wants to be the Libertarian nominee in 2020. Former Representative Joe Walsh of the 8th District in Illinois is also speaking out against Trump. Why? Because there's a chance that he wants to be the Libertarian nominee for president in 2020. The political theater gets very large. And this goes back to the stuff that we were talking about. We were just like, it's a constant question. It's like, do these people believe anything that they're saying? Or is this just a way that they can climb in the power dynamic? The way they can climb the ranks of Washington? I mean, we've talked before, though, about how it is somewhat beneficial to people to run for president. It's an enormous advertising campaign. People are donating all kinds of money. I mean... It's just a very large publicity stunt. People are going to be buying your books if you have one. Almost everybody writes a book when they're running for president. John Delaney just said the only reason he wrote a book for his presidential campaign was because you have to write a book when you're running for president. Because you have to write a book for the presidential campaign. All right. His book was called The Right Answer. I saw some presentations on it. I mean, when you have some guy like John Delaney... I heard something very interesting about him. One of the most interesting, entertaining Instagrams that I follow, I should say the most entertaining Instagram account that I follow, was saying that John Delaney, Marianne Williamson, and Mike Gravel should not be running for president. Why? Because they're taking away spots on the debate stage from actual legitimate candidates. John Delaney, Mike Gravel, and Marianne Williamson do not want to run for president to win they only want to run for exposure. All the things we talked about before, promoting books, perhaps potential cabinet positions. And Mike Gravel is, the Mike Gravel campaign has said very clearly, they are only running to raise awareness of the ideas and the issues. They want Mike on the debate stage to just challenge the status quo. And I said, though, that's kind of a good thing on the one hand. It's challenging the establishment. We introduced this segment by talking about how it's good to challenge the political establishment. On the other hand, though, I mean, let's let's not kid ourselves, though. One more note about that. Mike Gravel is 88 years old. I completely agree. He's not running to win the presidency. And even Marianne Williamson, you'd say she has some very good ideas. I actually like that she's talking about a politics of love and all those things. I'm That's something that is good to kind of bring into the political discussions. I've also said, though, in my first upload on this channel about Marianne Williamson... It's like she does represent a certain part of the Democratic Party that often gets overlooked. Representative Tim Ryan, who's also a candidate, called it the yoga vote. But it's more than yoga. It's like the kind of spiritual conscious side of the Democrat Party. I mean, a lot of people might vote green. Some people might vote for the Peace and Freedom Party. It's the people who watch the Gaia Network. Let's just say that. But yes, I mean, Marianne Williamson does represent that portion of the party. Is she running to win the presidency? I don't personally believe so. But John Delaney, John Delaney, is he trying to get into the debates to take away a spot from somebody else because he didn't genuinely want to be president? I don't think so, and I don't really accept that. John Delaney, the, the former representative of the 6th District of Maryland, was not very well known prior to to 2017. He declared his candidacy in 2017, but make no mistake, he was running to win it. He would have loved to have been president. Would Marianne Williamson actually want to be president? I don't think so. She might be Secretary of Education if a Democrat wins the nominee, or sorry, wins the presidency, of course, nominee and then nominee for the Democratic Party and then going on to win the presidency. Marianne Williamson might be a choice for Secretary of Education. But no, I don't personally believe that she would want to be president of the United States. John Delaney would love to be president. And it's just something that's something I noticed that Mike Gravel and Marianne Williamson might not be in it to win it. John Delaney could be. Now, we might do an entire upload on this. I know these political uploads aren't super popular. You want to hear some wacky conspiracy theories? I mean, like I said, we'll probably expand this into a larger upload, but... There is this theory out there, it's a total conspiracy theory, that the Democrats have already selected their nominee for 2020. Have you heard this? It's been going around, even in MSM circles. I might have first heard it on CNN or something. I'm not even really sure. 
oh, I can't even remember the first place I heard it, but they're just like, they're running a diverse platform. The reason why we have 23 plus candidates running for the Democratic nominee, for the nomination, is because they just want to appear diverse. But they've already known from the beginning that it's going to be Joe Biden. They just want to act like they're the party of diversity, but they know it's going to be Joe Biden. I mean, that's just a theory that's been put out. And I'm like, all right, I can see your point. Why is Julian Castro running? Well, to show that the Democrats are friendly with Latinos. Why is Andrew Yang running? Well, to show that the Democrats can also accept an Asian American candidate. And why is Wayne Messam running? Well, to show that a, uh, an African American male is also running on the Democratic side. That's what, I mean, that is one theory that has been put forth from multiple people about Wayne Messam, the mayor of Miramar, Florida, who entered the race late in the game, where they just like, well, we don't have a completely black male of immigrant descent. Let's bring in Wayne Messam. That is not my original theory. That is not my original theory at all. Um, that's just something that I've heard. Like I said, the first time I heard it was on one of these mainstream media sites. And a lot of people are kind of expressing that idea in, in the comments section and such. That the Democrats already know that they're going to go with Joe Biden and... They are just trying to appear diverse to say, oh yeah, we actually love everybody, but we're just going to go with the establishment individual who was in Congress, in the Senate, in the Senate since the 1970s. <clears throat> Wasn't Biden first elected to the Senate, what, 1979 was it? Something like that. I'm not good on dates. But it's like, they definitely do have a long history of establishment with Joe Biden it was like something like 36 years in the Senate or something like that. I'm just going to drink some water real fast. Excuse me. I don't like to do that, but my throat's getting a little rough. Okay. One last thing, though. And it's like, to talk about this type of conspiracy thing, I'm also kind of skeptical of Cory Booker. Is Cory Booker really being genuine? Cory Booker has a lot of a lot of connections. He was kind of endorsed by Tim Ryan in his book, The Real Food Revolution. There's a little bit of a section there about how Cory Booker is a good person. Andrew Yang says that he was personal friends with Cory Booker back when he was mayor of Newark, New, Jer New Jersey. So it's like, I mean, it might not be Biden. Is it possible that Cory Booker is going to have a late surge in the polls and he will be the nominee? Is that possible? You heard it here first on Black Box Online Radio. I mean, that it's not actually that they're rigging the system to make it look like Joe Biden is going to win. It's that Cory Booker is going to win. Why Cory Booker? Well, because he has taken more money from the pharmaceutical industry than any other senator. So says the garbage on the internet. There's a famous line from Russell Brand when he's like, these political elections are determined by money. Whoever has the most money wins. You ever heard that before? I'm sure you've heard a variant of that statement. Well, I mean, more money from the pharmaceutical industry than any other person in the Senate. There's a lot of money behind Cory Booker. He even had to apologize because someone was standing next to him with a pro-Palestinian sign. This happened last summer. You remember, do you remember that? He's holding a... He's not holding it. Someone is standing next to him holding something pro-Palestinian. He had to deliver an apology. Why? Because he gets lots of money from contributors who are opposed to that side of politics. Once again, Cory Booker is all about big money. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. That's just a theory, though. I'm not saying I know 100%. I never know 100%. We're just in the general public. We're just people who watch the news and listen to things and listen to different opinions and listen to these people. And we try to think, hmm, what's actually going on? Well, that's all I have to say. What do you think about some of this stuff? And if you think that there's any sort of conspiracy theory going on with the Democratic Party, I would love to hear from you. Please drop a comment below. Until next time.